learners it's time for another session of science with mom malu today's topic is earthquake tsunami and volcanic eruption preparedness let's review the things that you have learned last meeting what concepts are being described by the following definitions let's go an area where most earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. Correct, the ring of fire. It states that the Earth's crust is broken into plates that move slowly but constantly. That's right, the plate tectonics theory. The location of most earthquake epicenters, volcanoes, and mountain ranges. Very good, the edges of the plate. This means that you are now ready to move on to our next lesson. Today's objectives are Enumerate ways to ensure disaster preparedness during earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. And suggest ways by which one can contribute to government efforts in reducing damage due to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Last time, you have learned that the Philippine plate interacts with the Eurasian plate. This causes earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions to occur in our country. Let's analyze some of the areas that are prone to earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions in our country. Let's start with the map showing risk to earthquakes. The dark red areas show high risk to earthquakes. That means areas in Luzon and in some parts of Mindanao. The light colored areas show low risk to earthquakes. An example is Palawan. Next, let's look at the risk to tsunamis. Again, the dark red areas show us high risk to tsunamis. That means the western part of Luzon and some parts of Visayas. The light-colored areas again show low risk to tsunamis, and that includes Palawan. The last map shows to us the risk of volcanic eruptions. High risk means the area is colored red. So here is the area of Mayon Volcano in Bicol region. It has a high risk of volcanic eruptions. The medium red areas show medium risk to volcanic eruptions, like some areas of Luzon and Mindanao. Again, the light colored areas or the white colored areas show no risk to volcanic eruptions, and that is Palawan. So how will you feel if you experience an earthquake in your area or if you live near volcanoes or if you live near the seashore? How will you feel if you experience earthquakes, volcanic eruption, and tsunamis? Will you be scared? It's okay to be afraid, but don't panic because today, we will learn ways to ensure the safety and protection of our family and our community. Let's start. What to do before, during, and after an earthquake? Before an earthquake, you have to plan and talk with your family. It is important to know all the safe spots in your home, like under strong furniture, and also, you have to know the danger spots or weak spots in your home, like near glass windows and mirrors. Make sure that you secure heavy fur furnishings like furniture, cabinet doors, and hanging objects. Prepare a go bag containing emergency food, water, first aid kit, tools, and extra clothing for each member of the family. It is important to list down all the emergency phone numbers that you can contact in case an earthquake happens. 
What are the contents of a go bag? A go bag is your emergency disaster kit and it has to include all of the things that will be needed by your family during an emergency. Example, first aid, medicine kits for your family, emergency blanket or extra clothing, maps or personal documents, this might include the emergency contact numbers, tools like a Swiss army knife or an all-purpose all knife, food and water for your family that should last for at least three days, power banks or chargers for your gadgets, flashlight and extra batteries, radio, battery-operated radio, and other essentials. Next, participate in earthquake drill and evacuation in school or workplace. Identify all exits in your building and in your home. Remove all non-structural hazards or obstacles that can stand in your way as you evacuate. In school, you have learned all about the drop, cover, and hold procedure. This is important because it can ensure your safety during an earthquake. In the drop position, this position uh, requires you to be on all fours and it will minimize the risk of falling. Plus, you will be able to crawl to a safe place. In cover, you must seek the shelter of any sturdy furniture such as under tables and chairs or desks. Hold on means that you are going to hold on to your shelter especially as the earthquake is still happening. Be ready to move with your shelter in case the the in case it slides. During an earthquake, what will you do? Keep calm and don't panic. If you are inside a building, do the dock cover and hold procedure. Stay inside until the shaking is over and it is safe to go out. If you are outside, go to an open area away from power lines and posts or anything that may fall or collapse. And if you are driving a vehicle or car, stop on the side of the road and stay inside the vehicle. Do not cross bridges or overpasses because it may be damaged due to the earthquake. After an earthquake, it is good to listen to the battery-operated radio or television for the latest emergency information. Stay away from damaged areas like broken windows, furniture, and electrical wires. Clean up fallen and spilled chemicals in your home like medicines and other flammable liquids. Inspect water sources, electrical wires, and LPG or gas tanks. Expect and prepare for aftershocks. And most of all, obey public safety advisories. Now that you know what to do during and after an earthquake, let us move on to tsunamis. Let's review what is a tsunami. A tsunami is huge ocean waves due to undersea earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. This may cause disturbances in the ocean floor and cause the waves to shift and gather in energy and speed. And because of that, a lot of destruction can be, uh, can be brought by a tsunami. What to do before, during, and after a tsunami? Before a tsunami, of course, you have to know if your area is prone to tsunamis, especially if you live near the coast. Know where the nearest evacuation area is. Also, prepare a go bag containing emergency food, water, first aid kit, tools, and extra clothing for your family. List emergency phone numbers and participate in community tsunami preparedness drills. During a tsunami, you have to beware and know the signs of a tsunami like an earthquake that is strong enough to be felt, 
sudden lowering of sea water level, and a loud roaring sound of incoming huge waves. These three things usually signal that a tsunami is about to come in. If that happens, immediately move to higher ground such as a hill or a mountain or uh, a home with a second floor and stay there. Follow the evacuation instructions from authorities and do not stay in restricted areas near the coast or beach. After a tsunami, do not leave the evacuation area and return to your house until the authorities say that it is safe to do so. Assess first any injuries and give medical attention to those who need them. Stay indoors until it is safe to go outside. Check your house for any damage and check any electrical wirings first before turning the electricity on. And report missing persons to the authorities and help in government efforts. Now, what do we do before, during, and after a volcanic eruption? Before a volcanic eruption, again, know whether you live near an active volcano. You have learned that an active volcano is one in which there are records that it has erupted in the last 10,000 years. Plan ahead and talk with your family. Prepare a go bag once again. For each member of the family, but this time you may include goggles and face masks. List emergency phone numbers and know the location of evacuation areas. During a volcanic eruption, listen to the radio or television for the latest emergency information. Follow the evacuation instructions from the authorities and do not stay in restricted areas near the volcano. If you are indoors, close all windows and doors and bring all machinery inside so that no dusk will enter your house. In case of ashfall, use goggles to protect your eyes and a dusk mask or face mask or a wet cloth to cover your nose and mouth. This will ensure that your breathing will be easier and that no dust particles will enter your nose and your lungs. If you are outside, seek shelter indoors immediately and protect your airway by covering your nose and mouth. Beware of mud flows if you live near a river or a stream and evacuate immediately because mud flows are very destructive and can happen all at once. After a volcanic eruption, assess the safety of your house. Do not return to your house until authorities say that it is safe to do so. Clear your roof of ashfall, because ashfall can cause a house to collapse. But be careful when you're on the roof. Stay indoors until it is safe to go outside and extend help to your neighbors, especially the elderly and the sick. Now, how can you help the government's efforts in reducing damage due to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, especially if you live in areas that are prone to these natural disasters? Is there something that you can do? Of course! The youth of the day have a lot of things that they can contribute to government's effort to reduce the damage of earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruption. Number one, you can help educate your community by sharing information about earthquakes and volcanoes. Communicate with family members and neighbors about what to do in case of disasters. Participate with your community in their efforts to make your community safe and protected. And obey local authorities. Somebody said that safety starts with awareness. And awareness starts with you. It is not yet too late to assess whether your area is prone to natural disasters. 
and you can use your voice to help ensure the safety of your community, your neighbors, and most of all, your family. Because knowledge is power! Thank you for listening. I hope that you have learned something again today. Don't forget to like and subscribe our, our page for more videos just like this. See you next time. Bye.